Szanowni Państwo, do znakomitego tematu, jaki jest Dear ladies and gentlemen, referring to this excellent topic that we have selected for this conference, uh, I was inspired to uh, explore this area, not only um, starting with the dictionary definition of myth, but uh, analyzing several areas related to, uh, to this idea. So here you can see several several uh, ideas that I'm going to uh, discuss, but one of the topics, one of the topics that I thought about is that uh, there have been two uh, ideas, two major thoughts created in the 20th century, and uh, in fact, it is only in the preamble to the uh, Venice Charter that we find uh, some important information, and I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to go talk about the Athens Ch Charter and the Venice Charter. So under the auspices of the League of Nations, and to give some directions uh, with respect to the reconstruction of damaged cities, and uh, in view of the fact that the, um, uh, that there was an very intensive reconstruction activity, the researchers uh, undertook this effort to uh, give some guidelines as to this process. And when it comes to the second charter, it was published in uh, 1943, so 10 years after the actual meeting. And it's interesting that it was actually published in France, but it was codified by Le Corbusier, who is identified by us as the author of the uh, um, Athens, Athens Charter. And there is also obviously the contribution of Jean Girado, who modified the original proceedings and took into account the different circumstances, that is, the circumstances arising from the Second World War. So there are many things that need to be explored, many voids, but I tried, I tried to analyze this publication from 1943 and the proceedings of the many architects. And among these proceedings, there is the text by Le Corbusier, but even his name is not present uh, on the cover. So I allowed myself in here, dear professor, to summarize the most important points of this uh, process of shaping the urban planning rules. So uh, our professor Zell has emphasized that there is no uh, consolidated version of the Athens Charter. So there is this functional version that was published in Paris and in Greece. And what we know is that publication summarized by Le Corbusier, and let me just emphasize that I have carried out extensive research and everybody is emphasizing that uh, the charter was written by Le Corbusier, that it was adopted in the 30s, but in fact, the story is quite more complex. And many people have this automatic association, and maybe this is a less known piece of information, that the rules of modern architecture were adopted uh, already in the 1920s on the basis of a plan from the 1925 by the investment started a bit earlier, they were more um, modified later on, but the rules of modern architecture related to the natural landscape were created in this kind of exotic circumstances. Obviously, 
Obviously, they were developed by architects that were already educated in the environment of modern northern architecture. We can also see a major contribution of architects from Poland, but we are not always aware of the fact that the very onset of the works um, dates back to Tel Aviv. I'm sure that all of you know that the office of modernism were inspired by these ideas, but I'm not sure if all of us know about the pre functional city, uh, the project by the author of the Paris Opera. But if we uh, explore uh, literature, we can also see these plans that uh, allocate a lot of space to industry, to culture, and so on. And uh, also in the case of uh, Lyon, by the same architect, we have this great residential complex that has a lot of uh, good functional features and is somewhere in between, between blocks of flats and traditional city houses. And the third theme is the lack of appreciation of the uh, contribution of Polish modernists from the 19. 30s in the reconstruction of Warsaw after the damage, after the Second World War. It is uh, often lost of us on us that these projects from the 1950s are uh, great modernist ideas, in fact. And this shows us that, uh, for instance, the transformation of Nowy Świat in Warsaw owes a lot to them. So these are some pictures we mm, now uh, know that Warsaw is uh, in intensely developed with uh, skyscrapers, but already in the 1930s there were some sketches, there were some projects. If you have a look at this picture in the bottom, uh, there was some idea to preserve the most precious monuments and introduce a freestanding development, including skyscrapers in the Warsaw city center. But I have to say that I was surprised to discover that already during the first years of the occupation, uh, many of the Warsaw architects undertook this effort to preserve the uh, buildings, to preserve the architecture. So here in the first picture, we see the enlargement of Świętokrzyska. Um, we uh, see here also some changes that were suggested by them. And now the actual situation after the war. Here we can see two adjacent city houses, townhouses. Uh, they were reconstructed in line with the uh, rules uh, uh, in effect in the 17th, 18th, 19th century architecture. And if we have a look at one of the townhouses at Nowy Świat from the backyard, the concept was modernized. There was uh, different, there were different materials used uh, for the facade, but uh, we can now appreciate that in the case of this street, we have this uh, unified, uh, clear, harmonious view. Maybe uh, these solutions may be surprising. On the left side, we have some ideas that were not put in practice, as the one involving the backyard facade of one of the buildings at Ratsławicka. It reminds us of some buildings in Beton, of office buildings, including the building uh, which hosts the Capitol Cinema. Passing on to the modernist architecture, there are some small enclaves of exclusive architectural complexes, and here in yellow, we can see some excellent, excellent modernist architecture that uh, unfortunately has this uh, 
element of social realism that was necessary in that specific context. But let me remind you that there were some modernist solutions developed during the occupation, but going slightly beyond this war period and moving on to the post-war period, as we can see in the picture of this black and white model, the attempt to isolate the pedestrian traffic and the vehicle traffic, this is one of the ideas that was not taken up after the war. My fourth association, and this was inspired by the text by Professor Jaren, is that uh, the reconstruction was uh, basically limited to the reconstruction of the facade, but uh, in the case uh, in um, the northern section of the Gerta Street, we have some modernist solutions at the back. It is worth uh, remembering that the location of the museum, of the National Museum, was possible because a uh, uh, loan to um, a loan incurred to uh, complete the renovation of a facade in one of the buildings allowed us to overtake the building and to convert it into the building of the museum. So in 1938, there was a new design including a reinforced concrete uh, floors. And as we can see, uh, the design was prepared by Stanisław Lorenz. The building was not uh, ready when the war broke out, and the Germans used it uh, to um, uh, to employ it also for for the museum pro uh, purposes. Uh, they established their uh, a branch of their museum. Some. Uh, mm, solutions at that point were introduced, so during the war uh, some um, facilities were uh, and, and installations were uh, fitted and as a result, uh, as a result this building uh, was preserved and developed. So this a uh, historic building was saved. And then, as we can see, the entire line of the street development, these pictures allow us to see uh, how the 19th century landscape of the old town in Warsaw was restored, including its incredible charm in this unified uh, way, which has been obviously adopted perfectly to its current function. Um, there's also another example from abroad, from Lower Saxony, from Hildesheim. Here we can see some buildings from the 1960s. Uh, so there was a hotel, the building of the city hall, so the buildings of some professional guilds were reconstructed, and that was made possible as a result of a bankruptcy, a bankruptcy of a hotel, so the uh, public, so the residents wanted to use this opportunity and to restore the previous condition of this building, so it's a great project, but uh, it uh, failed to meet the expectations of the public. One more example from Szczecin. Here you can see some work, some attempts to implement some new investments in the old town. So I can tell you that some of these townhouses, uh, even those that were perfectly preserved, everything was cleared, and uh, this uh, uh, city center was completely uh, remodeled, but we can see in the fourth picture from on the right the pre-war um, uh, appearance of this building, and over the next 10 years everything was completely cleared out. There was uh, there were there was this decade of war as if 
the bombardment uh, damaged everything, which is not true. Well, what was left was torn down and then rebuilt. And now one more association that came to my mind. Uh, this picture in the left concerns uh, the construction of uh, bridges and uh, the uh, reconstruction of uh, Rotterdam. So here we have Gary de Vitter, who after the bombardment of Rotterdam, the bombardment of Rotterdam damaged the city. He represents, he presents here the concept of reconstruction of the town and the decision was made to include immediately this town and all of the reconstruction facilities into the network of ports of the country. So here we have a portrait of an architect that was painted by Han van Negeren. We know that it's the offer of these fake Vermeers, so he was a very able, able painter. And we know that his fakes were also his attempts at ridiculing the art critics. But going back to urban planning, we can see in here the plan from the war period and the proposed design of the new Rotterdam and that relied on the design from the 1920s. So the uh, initial attempt to modernize um, Mo Rotterdam uh, were uh, prepared in the 20s and then were continuously implemented also during the war. However, the offer of these plans left Rotterdam and now a new person was appointed. It was Cornelius Van Tra. He suggested a completely modernized version, idea, and concept of this city and um, under the influence of the entrepreneurs who exercised so much pressure uh, and uh, uh, were so much against uh, restoring the historic um, version of the town. So, as a result, um, the architect uh, who originally for 20 years worked on the original concept and presented it to the German administration uh, decided to abandon this idea. Uh, he was dismissed and another person was asked to carry on the work. Now, let me explore another association who believe that a 19th century uh, architecture is the authentic um, architecture. We can use here the example from Athens, where uh, Karl Friedrich Schinkel uh, made these paintings in the 20s, show some concepts, some ideas of adopting the Acropole as a residence for the king of Greece, Otton I. Um, that is a little less known story, but the picture in the left shows us Acropole as the idea of a reconverted, um, a reconverted structure that would combine the public and private uh, functions. So a rectoion was supposed to be reconverted. There should be um, the idea assumed that there should be uh, a modern, uh, modern building attached. So one more example by Karl Friedrich Schenkel, architect Fantal, fan, uh, fantasies and monumentalization, and finally, finally, uh, the manifest of Adolf Loos, ornament and crime. Here we can see 
a picture taken up from the archive is a picture on a stamp duty and we can see the building that was supposed to be completed, erected with the money that's collected. Our architect, Adolf Loos, proposed a completely abstract solution, a completely abstract form that nonetheless uh, fitted the context of Montmartre. Uh, then if we uh, see uh, some other projects like Babylon Hotel or the house uh, of Josephine Baker. And finally, my last examples. We have some examples from Venice, some excellent office buildings, and then finally the uh, uh, finally unrealized, unimplemented a project by Louis Kahn and uh, Le Corbusier. And we can see how these modernist buildings would perfectly fit into this historic context. Thank you, thank you very much. You have managed to complete on time.